All right, hello to all the Copictopia Summer Fun Retreat 2023 Day 2 Class 3 participants. <laughs> We'd like to thank everyone for being here. We'd like to thank uh, Christina for having uh, me, Kevin Nakagawa, and Stampscapes be um, part of the retreat uh, curriculum. Really appreciate it and uh, have been looking forward to this class for a long time. If you are watching this class or this video at the less at the Copic to, you know, the summer fun retreat, um, it means we've had some kind of, you know, catastrophic connectivity problems and uh, we needed this as a backup, but I'm going to cover everything that I would have had it been live or hopefully if you're watching this after the uh, weekend, um, you're just watching it to as a refresher course for what we learned in class today. Okay, so let's get right into it. You're going to be learning how to use um, your Stampscapes uh, line of imagery with nature set number eight. Okay, this is a little bit of an kind of a foundational ecosystem for the line, I believe. It has some of the more popular designs in it and a couple of the really great kind of universal filler images. Okay. But one of the things that I want to make clear is that there's different Stampscape sets out there, but it's not an ecosystem in themselves. They can be used with any of the other Stampscapes, hundreds of other Stampscapes images out there. Everything is made to scale and everything is made to, you know, blend together, all right, across the entire line. But this one right here is a really good basic set, okay? Now we're going to be learning how to use it with... The paper that you have in your kits here, we have different configurations and sizes of glossy cardstock, and then we have some matte cardstock, and then holographic vinyl sticker paper, which is going to be really fun, all right? But the things that we learn in class today are only kind of touching the surface. These are the main types of papers that we would probably be using for most types of stamping that we're doing. But there's a big array of other types of media surface combinations that you can use with your Stampscapes imagery, okay? And I thought instead of just kind of mentioning that, we would show this quick video here to show you some different types of examples where you can learn what you've learned, uh, where you can utilize what you've learned in class today and apply it to those other types of um, combinations going forward, okay, or in the future. All right, so I thought we would do that right now, and then after that video, we'll show you how to utilize your Stampscapes imagery and how to blend them all together as the first hands-on portion of this workshop. Different types of white cardstocks, matte, semi-gloss, or glossy, are a great foundation for your Stampscapes card making. But there's a lot of other different types of media and surface combinations that you can use with your Stampscapes stamps. Stampscapes is not specific to any type of technique or medium, and it's not brand specific either. And in this video, we'll show you some different variations. How about black embossing on purple cardstock? Glossy cardstock with dye-based inks. How about a holographic printable vinyl? This is blue holographic cardstock, not the same as printable vinyl. This is done on a horizontal uh, format with black ink impressions. This is vertical for kind of more of that northern light type of look with white impressions. Different variations of that type of thing with gold holographic cardstock. And here's red holographic cardstock. This one is a dark blue foil with a moon up in the sky. Or how about changing that to Stardream Lapis Lazuli cardstock with glow-in-the-dark stickers like a kid would use. Here it is in the light and in the dark. How about the same type of thing but a little twist on it with the white impressions? Look how dramatic that can look. And how about photo stamping, where we stamp on the top of photographic prints? Or we can have a little twist of that previous scene with 
Our foreground imagery stamped on a piece of translucent vellum, thus increasing the illusion of depth within a scene and creating a nice um, kind of depiction of space and distance. Here's another example of the snowy covered bridge using the vellum technique. And how about another uh, type of format with reflection cards using silver foil on the lower portion of the interior of a card. Here we have these images stamped out on a photograph on top. Here's the images with a simple stamping on that silver cardstock. And here's how I pair them together on the interior um, space of a card. We take, make use of that fold and the format of the card in general. And we pair those together like that and look at that illusion of kind of a three-dimensional uh, type of space. A little twist on that with the lightning bolt striking above and reflecting in that lower portion. And how about a glow-in-the-dark moon with some clear crystals? And another reflection card, distant images stamped out in white, foreground images stamped out in black. And how about a slimline reflection card with a piece of Star Dream Aquamarine on top with the silver card stock below. Here's a piece of some holographic printable vinyl with gold uh, foil down below for a very colorful reflective format. Okay, and here's some printable vinyls with some different textures. Kind of a glitter one right here. And this one's more of like a icy shardy type of thing, so I thought appropriate for an ice cave. Art tiles here done in a triptych style format where you separate the uh, tiles. Some hybrid inks right here, a combination of pigment and dyes. And how about just some impressions on some colored foils here. Playing with some stencils here with the autumn leaf, colored pencils, and watercolor pencils here. And how about some baby sea turtles rising in the moonlight? A combination of different types of uh, surfaces here. Here we have a very large 11 by 17 format, but you can also stamp very small, like this one. Here's some uh, scenes by some customers using stencils by Eileen. More stenciling, very basic image only impressions. How about an underwater cave? Adding some dimension to the scenes with three-dimensional cutouts. Here's a piece, very minimal, very graphic, very effective. And here's one very full of layers. And how about some dog appreciation here? <laughs> A piece of vellum, where Stampscapes is used as a background. A very colorful scene here. A very minimal scene here. And how about a scene here that we might almost term Stamp Expressionism. Stamping on actual ceramic tiles. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video showing different variations of how to use your stamps. Okay, now there's a lot of different things that will go into with the Stampscapes line, but at the most basic um, type of uh, lesson, for those that haven't used um, 
tonal and solid styles of images before. Images that have a lot of surface area, okay, that can be just different on its own. I know this is like stamping 001 or something like that, but a lot of people haven't used um, tonal designs, okay? They've used a lot of designs that are outline in nature where you stamp them out and then you color them in. Those types of designs are, there's less surface area to them, so there's it requires less pressure to get a good solid impression out of it, okay? So what I want you to do is open up your packs, okay? And grab your main image, which is the Lakeside Cove. It's this one right here. And that is this one right here. And get it mounted on your acrylic block, okay? And now, what I'm going to recommend for this first portion of our stamping process is to grab a couple pieces of your glossy cardstock, okay? Now, you're going to be using both types of papers, but I think just this initial type of lesson here um, is to use the paper that has the most amount of surface area and is just the easiest to stamp on, okay? Now, one of the things that I like to do, too, is I like to have a decent amount of um, blotter paper underneath my stamping service. That makes the contouring of the card easier to get a good impression because you're stamping on something, you know, semi, -so you know, soft. It's not soft as a sponge or something like that, but they're give it gives you a little bit of cushioning underneath. Things that other things that people use or, you know, little magazine ads or something like this, you can put this underneath your blotter paper or something like this. I know you're at a, you know, you're at a retreat right now in a workshop. You don't have like, you know, a bunch of newspapers sitting out in your, you know, your uh, garage or something like that or that came in the mail. But, you know, if you are having trouble getting a good impression, try to get a little bit more of a blotter paper underneath what you're working with, okay? All right. So that being said, Lakeside Cove Large. Now, where do you stamp your, you know, where do you position your scenes, okay? In scenes, if you want more sky like this one, then you stamp out your land images lower in the composition. If you want more water in this case, you stamp it higher. You can go uh, portrait or landscape like that, okay? I'm gonna go uh, portrait and I'll go kind of high in this composition, leaving myself more area uh, down below the lakeside coat. Okay, here's your impression pressure. You want to give good impression pressure over the entire stamp. Okay, don't rock your stamp or something like that, lifting it from the surface. Just lay it down nice and flat, but kind of imagine that you're hitting, uh, I would say, three different areas, left, right, uh, right, and center. Okay, so you go left, right, right, center, or left, center, right, whatever direction, and then go a little bit above and a little bit below. But I get leverage going by standing up so I don't have to press with my wrists or anything like that. That's not good for you. So just use, you know, just your natural body weight and gives, you know, a little bit of pressure over the whole thing. Now I'm holding this down longer than I should have with stays on ink because stays on ink dries really fast. So just kind of peel that off like that, okay? Don't peel it off too fast, otherwise you might get a real curled um, card or something like that. But see like that? You get a really good impression pressure. Now, you're using brand new stamps. Sometimes brand new stamps, you know, they have a little bit of a re-resist on them. So, you know, you might get a little bit of an area that didn't stamp out so well. But, you know, it go for, you know, multiple impressions. Christina has given you a ton of paper uh, to use in this class. Uh, more paper in the uh, history of, uh, you know, scenic stamping classes in general, okay? But try to go for, I would say, three or four impressions. You know, if you get the, you know, if you get the impression pressure right off the bat, you don't have to do multiples of this. But this is kind of setting the foundation for our other stamps to come, okay? So we're using this as a focal point, foundation stamp, kind of, you know, to establish our scene. And then we'll add in our filler stamps around it, okay? So go for some different impressions, okay? Or different areas, okay? Now, we have this um, printout right here showing, you know, just some different variations on where you can place your imagery. Now, this one right here is just using this portion of the Lakeside Cove right here and here 
for these little, you know, extra little aisles or something like this. And this is the larger um, rocks and uh, trees down below. Okay, pines and rocks. But get that established, okay? Get comfortable with um, stamping these large stamps first, okay? So we'll do our cloud, you know, foreground with the uh, oak branch uh, later. Okay, so see that right there? Pull that off right there, and you get a perfect impression every time. All right, so do that. I would say, you know, get two or three, or, you know, if you're really fast, you can get four or five of these established, okay? You know, don't do it over all of your paper or something like that. I'll show you some different compositional ideas coming up here later. Okay, so first up, uh, impression pressure, okay? And uh, after that, we'll move on to the next uh, stage, which is filling out our area with additional filler stamps. Okay, hopefully you've got your impression pressure down and got the whole feel of working with high density, you know, high surface area stamps. And you're ready to go on to your next stage, okay? So, Stampscape stamps have been designed to be used seamlessly with their sibling designs, other stamps within the entire system, okay? But they've also been designed to be repeated so you can use them with them their own selves, okay, many times, okay? The thing about um, scenic stamps, unlike something like a word stamp or something like that, or something very specific like, uh, like a figure or a... I don't know, like a birthday cake for a birthday card. You know, if you stamp it several times, it looks, you know, there are several impressions of the same thing. But when it comes to nature, if you see several trees together, it doesn't necessarily look like, oh, there's, you know, this repetition of design because it just looks naturally. There's, you know, thousands of trees in a given area. Okay, so let's see how to extend our scenes out, and I'll use this um, slimline card right here because we have a lot of space around this image, okay? So one of the things is, or the second thing is with Stampscape stamps, that might be a lot different from kind of the way you would use other types of stamps is that Stampscape's designs have been designed to be overlapped with one another, to do very little careful positioning um, and placement, all right? And, okay, so what people generally think of when they're, they think about adding new images to a pre-existing impression is that they're thinking about it in terms of like a puzzle or something like that where everything goes edge to edge, okay? But that's not the case with Stampscapes. With Stampscapes, I design things to be overlapped with the previous impressions. Now I'm talking about a quarter inch to a half inch or so. There's, there's a lot of leeway there, okay? So overlap a little bit more probably than you think you're going to need. Now don't overlap by two inches or something like that but just use that image right next to it and it'll line up and overlap just fine. I, I, I didn't stamp that quickly enough, so my ink over here is a little bit dry, but let's get this going here. Okay, let's do this faster here. Okay, so I'm overlapping, well, I might say about a half inch or so, okay? Into my previous impression, if you stamp it a little bit higher, a little bit lower, it's not going to matter, okay? It'll look fine. All right, and there you go. Yeah, I missed a little bit like there. <laughs> Getting a little bit dry on here on my stamp. But do you see how all these trees line up like that? Okay, but now what are the other designs for? Let's show you um, a, the difference between uh, its own imagery used, you know, in multiple impressions, but let's go with the Pines and Rocks stamp right here, okay? So how this one's going to differ is that these trees are larger, so if we stamp them to the side, it'll look like a closer part of this cove, or, you know, if you stamp them down here, it'll look like foreground. Okay, so let's get this inked up and stamped out. Same type of thing, you're gonna wanna overlap your previous impression, okay? Now, if you stamp it out and you have a gap in between your images, don't worry about that, okay? 
you'll just know to overlap more the next time, all right? That's why we have a lot of paper to practice with here. And if you have a gap, it just means, you know, in nature, there could be a gap in between, um, you know, your objects here. Here's a little inlet and there's some water that can get around there. Or you can just mask things off a little bit and mask off your rocks and you can just put another tree in between that space, okay? So no careful masking or anything like that. No careful, you know, I, I wouldn't say careful, no, um, I don't know, super specific placement, okay? You don't need to um, use a stamp positioner and, you know, really get things lined up precisely. I guess that, that would be the term. No precise um, positioning needed, okay? I mean, you can be precise, if, you know, but still overlap your previous impression, okay? So we have that. Now you can see the difference between these two. You know, I think both of them look pretty cool. This one, of course, includes a larger um, tree formation right here. So it looks like this whole scene comes a little bit closer to us down here, right? Okay, now that's overlapping kind of side to side like this, okay? But let's talk about adding in some foreground here, okay? So I tell you what, let's go with this one right here because I don't have any larger trees in here. But let's use the same pines and rock stamp here and let's create a little bit of foreground with it okay now stampscape stamps you know they can run off the edge of the cards or you can just use certain portions of them for what you want okay so let's say that we you know we're in this you know taking a look at the scene from the shoreline across the lake or something like that okay so I'm just using the tops of these trees right down here like so Ink up a little bit more than you think you'll need, though, okay? Just so you don't have these floating trees up here with nothing underneath, you know, where it didn't stamp out. So ink up more than you think you're going to need. You know, it's just a little bit of ink that you're using, no big deal. Okay? Now look at that shoreline right there. Look at the depth that we're creating like this. So it's a little bit of a different depth than this one, okay? Because you're just using some pine trees instead of, uh, you know, um, Kind of more of a, a, a continuous shoreline right in here. Okay. And what I like to do is I usually leave a little bit of space in here. I mean, you can put more right here, but I usually leave a little bit of space in here. And that's to kind of let the viewer enter the scene a little bit. Okay. All right. Now that's the other... Um, pine tree image. What is this one for? Okay. Now, if you look on your layouts here, you can see some different examples of the um, oak branch. Okay. Over right here, you have this overhanging tree limb coming from the top, or you can have it coming from the bottom here, like it's a little bush. Here it is on the top again. It goes left and right corner like that. Now, I mean, you don't, you know, the tree stamp like this doesn't have to be kind of a small element like that but you see how you have these little bushes like that you could do a whole scene where it's just you know this is the dominant scene and you have just some clouds around it or something of that sort but let's just use a little bit of this right in here you know you do see deciduous trees with evergreens a lot out in nature let me just use this right in the left and right corner like this and you notice how I can bring this down and you notice how I'm overlapping my imagery coming from above. So it's like um, overlapping foreground into our imagery, except it's not meant to look like it's, you know, that same distance. It's something that's much closer to us. So again, it's another element that helps in the framing of our composition. And it's another element that kind of extends the, uh, the the field of view of the scene. Okay, so practice your overlapping um, kind of on a, on a horizontal basis, you know, uh, connecting to our designs member every time you stamp out um, one 
uh, image over here. When you go over here, remember to re-ink in between, okay? And you can reference these designs right up here. Remember, don't get to your cloud quite yet, but we're just gonna, we're gonna get to that next. But you can look at all these different compositions and come up with your own composition. Now you can do the dye-based inks too um, that you have on that matte cardstock too. Because, you know, if we have time here, or if you have time, you can color those in with your um, Copic markers or something like that. And those would be perfect, um, you know, tools that you all have at the retreat to color in some of these scenes. So we'll teach you how to color with the dye-based inks too, with the glossy cardstock, with um, some paper towels and uh, your memento blue tones, okay? All right, so pause the video here and get to that some of that overlapping. Okay, I hope that went well for everyone. I um, hope that you are comfortable with your overlapping of imagery. And our next step is to do some pretty extreme overlapping, okay? We're going to be overlapping our imagery in a, a, a different textural way here. <laughs> Uh, with the cloud cumulus, okay? All right, now let me show you what this cloud cumulus looks like. All right, now I'm going to be doing it in the Memento Bahama blue. It's the medium tone blue, okay? You can do it in any color you want. I'm gonna go with the medium tone just so you can kind of see it, but it'll also be a little bit lighter than our imagery um, within the scene. If you go, yeah, you, we can stamp it out in black and I'll show you what that looks like as well. But let's start off with the uh, Bahama blue. Okay, now first of all, when I stamp this out, it is a rectangle design, and I'm going to show you what people have a tendency of doing if they haven't seen this used before, okay? And I have a lot of videos on how to use sky imagery, including this cloud, okay? All right, so it's a rectangle like that, and going back to that whole idea of overlapping, if people kind of are a little bit too, you know, um, I don't know, kind of uh, jigsaw puzzle-ish in approach. I guess in this one it would be like stacking like brick lane or something like that. Things look a little bit too <laughs> unrealistic, okay? Like this, okay? In the sky like this, all right? And you would get a look like this, all right? But you want to do much more overlapping, and you want to change the angle of this one a little bit. So um, with the trees, you don't really change the angle and overlap, but with the cloud, you do, okay? So this is what we want to avoid here, all right? So let me just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to overlap my clouds quite a bit more, and I'm changing the angle slightly where it becomes more of a continuous sky. Now, see, I'm stamping it right in that seam like that. From one impression to the next, I mean, it doesn't matter which angle you use. I'm not going with a full, um, you know, 90 degree because then it's squared off again. But, you know, you can get, even with my horrible kind of uh, placement of it in the beginning, that, you know, doesn't look too bad like that, right? All right. So, but how do we avoid that just all together, okay? So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Now this is the easiest um, technique that you'll ever do with um, your imagery. Now I do have that tone around, you know, this area in here for a reason, okay? And it's because I want that to kind of fade off and blend in with the other imagery. But let's make it a little bit lighter by mopping off some of that ink around the edge. Now I'm doing it with a dry paper towel. Don't do it with a wet paper towel. We just want to remove some of that ink so that it stamps out drier and thus lighter on that perimeter, okay? So I'm also giving this kind of central pressure. You don't need to stand up for this one, okay? Just good, even pressure. And my pressure is kind of in my index finger like that, okay? But look at how there's no kind of hard edge around there, okay? You ink up again, it just, you know, it takes a couple seconds like this, okay? And on the top part, I'm mopping off, oh, a good quarter inch like that. But look at that blend there. There is no seam, no lines in between our imagery, okay? Now, if you notice, do you notice how these billows 
have all this kind of top lighting coming in here, okay? One of the things I'm gonna recommend is that you have an arrow showing the direction of that lighting, okay? So this cloud stamp right here, let me see if I can get some light on there. Do you see that? Where the billows are like that? So that's being top lit like that, okay? So when you're stamping this out, you can always see that arrow and what direction it's pointing at. So if the lighting is coming from above, you have that arrow pointed up like that, okay? So let's show you what this looks like in application here, okay? Let's take this scene right here, and I'll show you a little twist with this water scene that you'll really like. Okay, ink up, quick wipe off, and don't be too gingerly with it, you know? Get a good wipe off around the perimeter like that. And you're gonna overlap your tree line right here to go down in the rocks too if you want to. Now, I wouldn't go like halfway and have some of the cloud down here, but see, I'm just, I have this right here, and I'm matching that up right with that tree line, and you're gonna go right over your trees. These are dye-based inks. The cloud is not going to look like it's in front of the tree. Okay, and you get that in the background, like that. I mean, you almost don't even really need to wipe it off, you know, with this tone of ink, but I'm gonna suggest that you do, because I'm gonna show you how to do this with black ink as well. Okay. Wipe off the edge like that, okay. Going like that, and I'm overlapping that, you know, previous design, like so. Over here, you know, the, I have the edge going off the page, so it doesn't really need anything, but you have a cloudy sky like that. Now, let's show you um, a couple different um, other versions of this, okay? So do you see this scene right here? where it's like a break in the clouds like that with some lighting coming through. Let me show you how to do that one, okay? Uh, let's just do it right here on this one, okay? So I have my arrow, yeah, say, can you see that arrow pointed up like that? Okay. Ink up, wipe off that top portion, especially. And now watch this. I stamped it like this, this, and this the first time. Now I'm changing the angle. It's, it's like a, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's 45 degrees, something like that maybe. So we're gonna keep just twirling it around, okay? So this is up like that, but watch this right here. And I'm gonna go like this. Quick wipe off, right around that top, take it. Central pressure, stamp it out like that. Now just, you know, if you get a line or something like that in your first, you know, card or something like that, or your, a few of your first impressions, just don't worry about it. Take off more ink the next time. Okay. Going around like that and so on. Now I might even go for a second impression. This second impression is going to be much lighter and let me fill in right in here. So look at that. I might even be able to go for a third impression. Look at this. So it's stamping out very dry and light in there, but look at this right here. It's like a break in the clouds like that. And that's how you create this type of uh, look. So let's do that on the scene right here really fast. Um, oh, let me see some of my layouts here. Okay, this one has a lot of um, sky area up here. Okay. Let me see if I can do this really fast. I'll keep this in my left hand. I'm right-handed. Okay, I didn't wipe off too much ink on that one. Okay, see it like that? And you get this break in the clouds. Now let me show you something that's really fun with your, any kind of body of water, okay? So I'm going to take up my cloud, wipe off like that. I'll put a cloud up here, but now watch this. I'll take this, wipe it around the perimeter. I'm gonna take my cloud, okay? It's pointed up like that above my lakeside coat. I'm gonna turn my cloud around like this now. Now it's not going to be a perfect mirrored impression, but close enough. Now you have that cloud reflecting down in your water. So every time you stamp it in the water, you're pointing it downward like this. And when you have it above your uh, tree line, 
you're stamping it right side up. Here, I'll just fill this in really fast. Okay. So you get those reflections like that. Isn't that fun? Okay, so remember, ink up, wipe off around the perimeter, center pressuring like that. Okay, let me do one quick um, uh, black impression here too. Some people like a grayscale, okay? You can stamp it in any color. If you're doing a sunset scene, then stamp it in oranges or something like that, or pinks and color in with uh, yellows or something like that. Um, let's see if I have a sunset scene here. Yeah, here it is right here. I have the mountain in the background, but I stamped those um, clouds in brown up there for this uh, yellow golden color scheme, okay? But some people like, if you, know, if you wanna go for a stormier sky, this is black right here. Now I'm gonna suggest that you use your dye based ink for this one because these are tiny little dots on here and the stays on ink would dry really fast, okay? I don't know, you know, you'd have to get it stamped pretty fast. You could, but uh, uh, the dye based ink might work a little bit easier for this one. But look at this, you know, so you're stamping in black and white, you know, landscapes. Maybe you're, you know, doing it more in the spirit of like an Ansel Adams or something like that, okay? But look at that. And here, let's go with uh, kind of secondary impressions down below in the water, you know, where you might want a lighter reflection. And look at that cloud like that. Look how dramatic that looks. It's a little bit of a different kind of emotional feel to it. The emotions of the scenes often come about by uh, the look of the skies, okay? Okay, so get some uh, practice in with your cloud stamp. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to use your um, water pattern small for creating um, some different types of lighting within your scene. All right. Okay, we can pause the video now. Okay, I hope you kind of get the got the feel of that cloud cumulus there. That's a really um, important uh, stamp within the Stampscapes line, I feel. If we stamp a, a Milky Way or something like that up in our sky and we have space around it, we can fill in with the cloud cumulus. If we have a, a lightning bolt or something like that, we can fill in with the cloud cumulus. It's, it's a general sky filler texture, but it can really be a scene unto itself. Okay, you can just stamp a few trees right like around here or your um, oak branch or something like that. Put a quote right here in the middle of that and it makes for a really dramatic setting. Everyone will always want to know how you did that cloud too. All right, so after that cloud's texture stamp, that's a texture for the sky. This water texture right here is a texture for just that, it's water, okay? Uh, some people have used it for like wood grain before I've seen. Um, but the way that I use this, okay, you can use it just stamping it out in black ink or something like that down here, okay? But I use this to kind of color and illuminate my lower section here, okay? And I'm gonna show you how you do that. It's really quite simple. Now we had you guys bring in um, a range of blue tones, okay? Light, medium, and darker. That's not a really dark blue, but it's dark enough for this purpose. Okay, now the texture stamp has kind of a top and bottom to it. There's lighter textures on top and the heavier ones down below. That's the way that I use it. It's like the smaller ones are kind of more distant now, when it comes to the way that I use this, I don't know if that really comes into play too much, but let me show you how you do this, okay? Let's start off with our lightest color, okay? Summer sky. Okay, now do you see how this lighting is within our sky like this? It's lighter here and a little bit darker around the perimeter like that. In scenes, I think it looks really dramatic if we leave Kind of illuminated areas within the scene. This is a really simple lighting scheme right here. It's basically darker around the perimeter and lighter in the middle like that, okay? It's like a vignette. All right here, it's just a little bit darker on the edges, but lighter here and then lighter here. We have a few streaks in here too. I'll show you how you do that later, okay? See this one right here? We have light up here 
and then light reflecting down in our water. When you have reflected light on water, it makes for a really dramatic setting. Now, how do you use do that, or how do you apply that with the water texture stamp, okay? Now, the water texture, I don't really use the water texture in scenes where I have my cloud down here because this represents really still water, okay? It's like a mirror down here. You don't have like ripples on the water when it's that mirrored, okay? So we don't use it with something like this, okay? I guess you could, but I don't. All right, so with the lightest color, okay, I'm going to fill in in here. This is talk about kind of extreme overlapping, okay? You're just kind of using this almost as a texturing device, okay? It's almost like a tonal uh, applicator. I used to have a stamp called the tonal applicator. But see this? I'm really adding a lot kind of on this perimeter area. And that's how I start getting this a little bit darker, okay? It'll look a little bit different um, if you're doing it on matte cardstock because it's going to absorb really fast but look how this is kind of developing right here you can put some of this lightest tone in the middle here too okay but watch this now when i get to that point when you know it's pretty filled in with that lightest texture what i'm going to do is i'm going to move on to my next color right here okay now when you start getting a little bit uh darker kind of do this at a little bit of a slower rate okay so we're going to start down here in the corners of my card like this okay go for several impressions as well you might have some brand new pads too where it's inking up much faster than mine okay if you want to just blot it off a couple of times before you go on here okay but now see how i'm doing this i'm kind of running it around like this i'm kind of tapping it too so it doesn't look so kind of squared off. And what you also can do is you can use it like that, but also use it on its edge like that, okay? So you watch this when I come across and you get those kind of striations going like this. So I'm just kind of tapping the top portion like this. And you can go for some lighter impressions in that center area as well. But you see that right there? So see how it's a little uneven? But that looks good when it comes to water, okay? Now, let's move to our darker tone. And let's go with the Danube Blue, okay? Danube Blue, it gets quite a bit darker. And let's hit some of this right around the base of our rocks. And I'm kind of leaving it lighter in there, okay? Remember to retain some of that lightness. I'm going up into my rocks a little bit too. You can do a lot of overlapping and look at that nice shimmer like that okay now let me show you a little twist on that you know um, you saw how um, the black cloud cumulus looks up there i guess it almost looks gray but let's do um a great scale version of this okay so let's show you this just in blacking and again i'm going to go with my dye based ink for this um portion down here just because it won't dry as fast as the stays on ink okay so when i start tapping like this it doesn't dry up after three taps okay so let's go with the black okay so it's the same principle but you're just starting much darker right off the bat and i would suggest you give this a try so light touch okay start tapping down here like this okay and i'm starting to move up a little bit hit re-ink come back in like this move over overlapping quite a bit remember light touch okay now use your very light dry version of this in this lighter area in the middle okay you'll get a feel for it you know what i mean it's it's kind of an unusual way to use a stamp okay but you know start every time you ring start it on the outside edge and move your way in okay now i'm gonna do this i just find it easier working this way for me than taking this and pulling it across this way so i'm going to turn this card in the, this direction right here and i'll see tapping it from the outside edge like this and come in like so and right up underneath those rocks up there 
And then I'm coming in, this is quite dry on here, so I'm coming into this lighter area, but I'm not stamping black, I'm stamping just some very light version of gray, okay? And you get that going in there, okay? And then we'll add in some other striations. Okay, now here's the thing. I'm using the water texture stamp right here, okay? Now, in landscape stamping, okay, the only thing that really states that this lakeside cove is a lakeside area are the reflections down here, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a scene where I did not stamp that textured section underneath or that reflected area, okay? So in other words, when I stamped out my lakeside cove, I didn't ink up these reflections down here, okay? And instead, I used a grassy texture stamp, which is the sedge filler down here. And there's my lakeside cove up there, but this is a grassy meadow because I've used this grass texture stamp in that lower section. I don't stamp it like this repetitively, but it's more just straight impressions right there that fill in this whole area, okay? So you can turn any kind of water stamp into grass, okay? So here's another scene right here. I just use this texture stamp right here. Here's the, um, the pines and rocks. There's your lakeside cove like that. And here's some of the pines and rocks trees growing in this grassy meadow. I just used the tops of my trees like in here. I masked some of this off and I stamped those trees in there, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, this, this grass texture stamp is not in this set, but we are uh, raffling some of these off at the end of class, okay? That's the sedge filler, okay? So get your uh, water texture stamp and try to do some different toning. Remember to work through your um, value scale of blues and then maybe try a black one for your, you know, your grayscale uh, looking uh, piece. Some people have even used this for the sky at times, you know, because that up there, it almost looks like if, the, if you didn't know, that could be kind of a, a, a cloudy sky and whatnot, right? Okay, so let's get that. And then we'll show you how to start um, inking these up and adding color to our scenes after this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, kind of practicing and getting the feel of the utilization of that texture stamp. That texture stamp is a great way to add in tone to your scenes, okay? So in some cases, when you utilize it in that fashion, you can almost create you know, a whole colored area just using the stamp as that texturing device. It's also a lighting device when you retain some areas of lightness um, with all of those repetitive uh, impressions like that. Okay, now here's an example of just that stamp just used, uh, you know, sparingly, okay, just for the texture itself and for very visible impressions going across there like that. Okay, so singular usage, overlapping though, but a lot of overlapping right here with that same image, okay? All right, so how do you color scenes? All right, now this is the thing that's a little bit different between um, my utilization of um, coloring media and what probably people have come to use widely in stamping, okay? And that's when they color something in. It's usually an entire space, right? If there's an outline styles of designs, we're stamping them out and coloring in given spaces for the most part. We might be adding a little bit of tone to it, but we're not retaining oftentimes a real strong area of lightness, okay? It's colored in completely. Now that can be done in stamp, uh, scenic stamping, stampscapes in general, okay? You can color this all in uniformly, but what I like to retain are areas of light. So when I'm coloring, I'm also lighting at the same time. We're creating a color scheme, but we're also creating a, a lighting scheme. or defining a lighting scheme, I should say, by the retention of lighter areas within a given space. So in a sky like this with uh, clouds um, billowing like that, I'm not just coloring them all out like this, okay? But how do we do that, okay? That's what people are going to be asking you when they see your scenes is, how did 
you get that area of light in there, okay? All right, different ways, different media surface combinations that you can use in uh, scenic stamping, all right? Now we have that those matte pieces of paper. Matte pieces of paper are really great for things like Copics, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, things that are, you know, work really well with a little bit of tooth to it and absorbency, okay? Um, tooth means texture, okay? And colored pencils work really great on textured papers because it has something to grab onto, okay? The glossy cardstocks are really great for that movie poster, book covers, um, business cards, flyers, things with a lot of um, a range of intensity, dull to bright and dark to light because you get on glossy cardstocks, they're coated. So you get a lot of surface retention of your media that's been applied. That's why, um, you know, uh, printers and publishers, etc., advertisers go for glossy cardstocks, magazine covers, you know, because it needs to get people's attention, all right? Now that works really great with dye-based inks, okay? So we've had you um, bring in three different values of blue here, okay? So how I do this, and I just use a wadded up paper towel, okay? I, 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 I've used um, ink applicators through the years, sponging types of things. Um, you can use all kinds of different things. I've come to start using um, paper towels because they can be found anywhere in the world and everyone has them in their, you know, kitchen cupboard somewhere, okay? And these are really great because they're absorbent and anything that's absorbent like this can also transfer that amount of liquid that gets sopped up into them, okay? Now, I start with my lightest tones, okay? And how this works is I get a good amount of, you know, sopping wet ink on here. It's kind of, I kind of wad it up in the shape of my finger like that, okay? Now, what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to start applying some of this to some of these clouds to emphasize my lighting in here, okay? So how do we do that? I can just start going in here like so. And see, I'm going with a very light tone of ink right here. If I was going with black and I just went like this, you know, it would be very strong. But this is a very light shade. So you can apply it pretty liberally, okay? Now, you might be utilizing a very, you know, a, a brand new pad. So there might be a ton of ink on here. So maybe get some ink on there and dab it off a little bit and get the feel of how much ink you're going to be applying. Now, for me, my pad's a little bit more medium dry right now so you might not even be able to see what i'm doing here actually i should have here I'll, I'll apply more to this left hand side to you so you can do a little comparison contrast okay but see i'm you i'm retaining some of that white of my clouds you can still see my clouds in here but some of them are colored so this side's a little bit darker this side's a little bit lighter in here okay so I can apply this around. I mean, you can leave it however you want. You can say, you can leave some of your clouds a little bit lighter over here, wherever you want it to be. And you're just saying that the lighting that's coming out from there is illuminating that cloud or a specific cloud, okay? Now, I'm gonna bring some of this down in my water as well, although this water doesn't really need it, okay? You can add some into your shadows, under your rocks there. This would be a great, you know, position to use like a, you know, an alcohol marker if you want to. You can come in here and get a more kind of detailed application of blue or gray or something like that um, right around in your shadow areas. That is using the uh, stays on, so that's putting my stays on back into solution a little bit, so maybe I won't do that on that one there. All right, but when do you need to move on to your next color? Because as I'm going on here, that tone on the outer perimeter is not really getting any darker. Now we can just leave it at that. I, I think that looks great. But let's go to this next blue now. I'm just using the same paper towel here and I'll get the perimeter a little bit darker, okay? And I'm still not going in here because I wanna retain my light, all right? So be a little bit careful about that. And that's all you need to do with that one, okay? Now here's an even darker blue. Let's see what that looks like. Now you can leave it real kind of pastel looking and not take it too dark if you want to. But I would get a little practice in here in the class.
Now, see, this is where uh, we had you stamp out your imagery on uh, the glossy cardstock with the stays on. So I don't, you know, this water-based ink isn't going to put back into solution, um, you know, a, a freshly stamped image. It, and I, I, I use dye-based inks for my main imagery all the time. I just didn't want you to have, you know, to go into your scenes and have it smearing around, you know, in class, just because we don't have time for it to dry. We don't have our, um, you know, embossing heat guns at home, you know, where we can, uh, you know, or at the uh, retreat where we can just heat set this really fast. So I, I thought, let's just do it with stays on and not even have to worry about it, okay? But there you get it right, have it right there, okay? So how this looks when we're applying it, let me just do this on just a blank piece of paper here, okay? So what I'm doing here a lot of times, sometimes I'm dabbing like this, sometimes I'm kind of going around like this for a real soft application, okay? Like this, okay? And I'm getting, you know, some tearing of my paper towel, then, you know, you can just switch off to a new piece if you want to, but I'm just going to keep going with the same one here. But let me show you what you can also do um, with this type of, uh, application right here. Okay. So this has no, no, um, cloud up here, but you can make your own clouds too, by bringing in and adding some streaks in here. I'm doing this with a real light touch though, and see how I kind of angle my paper so I can kind of drag in like this. And then we can kind of create this kind of streaky kind of sky. What do you call it? Cirrus clouds, I think, or something like that. Those are all wispy types. Okay, and you can have a little cloud up there. Here, let me create a little bit of a stronger kind of streak in there so you can see it a little bit better like that. Okay, and now I can also do that in my water down here too. So there's all kinds of different looks you can give to your scenes, okay? So here's a real kind of streaky look right there, but look how great that negative space looks from the absence of application of tone, okay? Let's make that a little bit darker like that. And if you want to build up a little bit of tone, you kind of tap it like that. And then you can kind of streak that out like that, okay? So, you know, kind of get a good saturation. And it's kind of getting a good foundation going um, of tone. And that makes this kind of process right here a little bit easier. So I, you know, I have a lot of practice with this. So I'm just doing this right here. It's this kind of this streaky type of application of uh, color, okay? But if you want to make it real easy on yourself, get a good um, layer going with your lightest tone like that, okay? And uh, let's see, um, you know, for something like this, you, you know, you can add tone around on the edge like that if you want to. But again, try to utilize um, your color in a coloring process, but also a lighting process, okay? So that means the retention of light. So it, when people kind of lose their lighting in here, they get really comfortable with the uh, toning process. And then they get with the darkest color and then they go all the way across it. And it's like, oh my God, I lost all my light. If that happens, don't worry about it. Just remember to put on the brakes, you know, a little bit more um, on future cards or whatnot. And plus, if sometimes something gets a little bit too dark on the interior like this, if you think, oh my God, I lost my lighting in there and it's, you know, not light anymore. One of the things you can do is just make your area around here a little bit darker. So by contrast, it makes the area in the interior visibly lighter looking. Okay. All right. So let's try that. Let's get to uh, your, 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 your dye based inks right here and start off with your lighter tones, work into your medium and then darker. Use a lot of the light little bit of the uh, medium tone and then even less of this one right here. Use this one around on the perimeter. Roughly speaking, okay, you just, you know, let your eye be the judge of it if you want to go a little bit darker, okay? Now there's all kinds of other things we can do, but like I said, like I, I would add in a streak of pink up here and I think that would look really cool for my sky. And that's one of the things that I did right here with the, um, the uh, colored pencil pieces and uh, the alcohol markers, okay? But it's the same type of look. Darker on the outside perimeter, lighter on the interior like that. Retain your light by just not coloring it out. Okay, let's try that. And uh, we'll see you on the next step.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that coloring process. With coloring, what you want to do is you just always want to run through a range of tones anytime you're doing um, a certain area to represent shading and lighter areas, be it alcohol pens. If you're doing something with colored pencils, try to grab a range of tones, you know, light, medium, and darker tones like this uh, to do whatever type of coloring you're doing. I, I rarely look for something like, okay, if I have a sky to do, I'm looking for, you know, a color called sky blue or something like that, like one color. It always has a range of tones to give yourself the most amount of variety in those colored areas, okay? All right, now let me show you how to expand on the range of textures and lighting and atmosphere and emotion in your scenes in one application of one medium okay and it's something that i always recommend to people all right so when we look at these scenes that i've completed here if you notice they all have kind of a atmospheric kind of haze about them there's a difference in lighting right over our objects in this case kind of on the water's edge with a little bit of mist or fog here it's against the rocks it's in the distant trees in there. Some of, it's on, some of it's on the clouds too. And what that is, is pigment ink, white pigment ink specifically, applied over the top of our scenes, our impressions, all right? So if you have a white pigment ink pad, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your 100% cotton cotton ball. I've tried the synthetics and they don't work at all, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to ink up your cotton ball, okay? Now it's going to be very frayed looking, okay? Look at how kind of furry and raised that cotton is. We don't want that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to smash it down. I just used the lid of the um, pad and I smash that down like that, okay? And then I ink up a little bit more. Now, if you're using a brand new pad where your white is super, super juicy, maybe just go for one application or just lightly dab it into your pad a little bit and then smash it down because you're going to have a lot more ink um, transferring onto your applicator than I am, okay? I keep my C for Cotton Brilliance pad fairly, maybe medium dry, okay? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this over the top of some of my um, impressions here. Now, Every time someone does this for the first time, they're adding big blobs of ink, okay? And they think, oh my God, this is like such a precarious type of exercise. What you want to do is you want to blot that off quite a bit, okay, before you add it on. Now, I don't need to because my pad, I just know, is fairly dry. But what you want to do is you want to apply this with a sensibility, almost as if you're applying powder, okay? And apply a very light touch at first, okay? So see this? I'm dabbing this down. And it's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 taps, right? 20, maybe, I don't know. And you see where that's just barely turning a little bit lighter over those distant trees, right? That's what you want, okay? And when it's applying that slowly, you can call it carefully, there's hardly anything you can do that can go wrong, okay? It's when people try to apply too much, they go like this, and they think, wait, we can't see anything. So they apply a big blob of it or something like that. But even if, if you do, just wipe it off and just start over again, okay? Or take more ink off of your applicator and apply it slowly. Now watch this as I apply it. Now where I start doing this, I usually start in my lighter areas, okay? Where you can't see anything because it's white over white. And then I kind of inch it over slowly into my darker areas next to it, okay? I don't add too much of this white pigment ink in the shadows, the darkest of areas, because if it's really dark in those areas, what we're saying is there's not very much lighting hitting that area. So, you know, you wouldn't have this mist being illuminated by light in the shadow areas because there is no light over there. Okay, so let me do that over this piece right here. Okay, I'm just applying it kind of slowly over my... Uh, let's go on the distant trees and around my water's edge like this, okay? And see that? Look at that atmospheric kind of haze that's in here now. Those trees in the distance look even farther back because they're lighter. And we have this area down here that becomes more varied in terms of textures and lighting. You can almost say this haze is, becomes kind of almost like a foreground because it's something that's in front of 
these rocks. Let's put some of it up. In, now, these clouds are already very soft, but let's add a little bit more around this opening like this. Okay. Now, I'm hitting it. When I hit it a little bit harder like that, when you can hear it, it's because this is very dry. I don't go in there and do that, you know, like that. Okay. Now, I just did that to make a point. Okay, but you see how that atmospheric type of oh, kind of application like that really adds to the scene. Okay, let's try it. Um, let's go with this one right here. We'll apply it around these rocks. Look at that fog right around this base of those rocks in there. I don't apply it over everything, kind of oscillate it, you know, have a little bit and then put none and put a little bit more see it's on that tree and then you can put some more on over on these trees you know what i mean it kind of oscillates the texturing and lighting of uh, the piece look at that tree now it looks more distant than this you know the one in front of it like that it was side by side but now it looks like it's behind it all right, so that is how that goes. Start in your lighter areas and work into your dark. Now, if you if you made your scenes all dark, then maybe you wouldn't use it because you're saying that lighting isn't hitting those areas very much. But that is your atmospheric uh, mist, okay? So go ahead and try that on a couple pieces or three or four. Get the feel of it, okay? Remember to apply it almost where there is nothing being applied at first, okay? And even, I don't know, like 20 or 30 taps, it only takes like, I don't know, less than five seconds to do it. So you want that kind of control and command over how much you're applying. Now, like I said, sometimes I'm, I'm removing it. So what I do is I switch to a clean piece of uh, cotton and I dab in it and then I'm removing that ink before it dries up, okay? So, so you know, sometimes you're, you, you know, when I'm getting, you know, when I'm getting used to the process, sometimes if I don't do it for a while, sometimes I'm removing just as much as I apply. I kind of remove and I apply, remove and apply. It's like, oh my God, I, rem I put too much, then I erase some of it, take it off, and then I reapply it, okay? All right. Oh, and I should say, that this process right here, it saves a lot of my scenes, okay? <laughs> it kind of pushes back sometimes these areas that are um, not so desirable looking, and I just put a veil of mist over the top of it, and it enhances, but it also kind of um, subdues um, something that I've done before. But it, it just brings everything together too, um, with another kind of textural and lighting quality. All right, so let's try that, and then we'll, I'll show you how to apply this pigment ink on our vinyl holographic cardstocks after this. Okay, hopefully you've had a good time playing around with that. I don't know, what I think is the most one of the most dynamic um, and simple um, types of uh, applications of media to scenes that you can do out there that complete it completely changes the um, the mood of them or alters them or heightens them I should say okay but let's go with that same white pigment ink and let's move into what I think for me is one of the most dynamic surfaces to come along in a while now this has been out there for a while but I didn't really think about stamping on it until maybe I don't know maybe a year ago or I don't know maybe it's been a year and a half or two years at this point in time but this is holographic printable vinyl okay now there's holographic card stocks out there that I also use but the holographic printable vinyls add this emulsion coating over the top of this that makes it um, more readily accepting of uh, different types of media. It's designed to go through your inkjet printer and your inkjet printer has water-based um, inkjet dyes, I think, that are in there that can adhere to the surface of this. Okay, so that opens it up for the water-based brilliance ink, okay? But I've also done other types of um, stamping on the printable vinyl with different types of inks. You have to give it a try if you're ever curious about, um, 
you know, if a certain media is going to be compatible with it or not, okay? It, there's different brands of inks and different um, brands of holographic vinyls that I think might be a little bit different. Most of them, to me, are about the same. But uh, we found that there are some kind of, uh, you know, um, different little tweaks that you might have to do with um, certain types of media. So, you know, you can do a little test on it. Or you can just, you know, use the links that I use for the ones that I'm using. You can see if it works or not. Everything that I've used so far works. Okay, so that being said, uh, what I'm going to do on this... Now, we could just stamp images right over the top of this, okay? But you'll have that holographic kind of look throughout all of the scenes. It'll show right through, say, your rocks and imagery and all that type of thing. And this is a pretty loud surface when you think about it, okay? So sometimes what I like to do is I like to kind of mute um, this surface a little bit, okay? And what I mean by that is I do what I call blocking out. I block out certain areas of it so that you get kind of the strength and uh, characteristic of the holographic, but it doesn't just dominate anything that you stamp over the top of it. Okay, so in scenic stamping, what I like to do is I like to apply some cloudy backgrounds, okay? So on this one, let's just do a... Um, print of our lakeside cove over the top of this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this blocking out white in here, okay? But it's not going to be a solid bar. Uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll just try to taper it. Okay, so what I mean by that, I'm adding some, a pretty, you know, thick coating of this right across the base of it like this, okay? Now, don't worry about getting this completely smooth or anything like that, okay? Mine is are not, okay? So let me show you what I'm going to do. So after that initial kind of bar, that's where this um, shoreline is going to go, okay? But up in here, I want to have a little bit of background cloud, so I'm going to build this up. But now when you add some of this pigment ink up here, try to taper it a little bit so it's a little bit thicker down here by this line and then you, you move up here and you have it a little bit thinner okay at a decent amount though okay so you can see roughly where those trees are going to go okay and like i said don't worry about it going on smooth this is not a smooth process the printable vinyl really grabs this ink and it dries and adheres very quickly surprisingly okay but that's the way these um these uh, coatings on top of the emulsion, uh, you know, the, the paper, that emulsion coating has been designed to work, okay? Now, there's this line right here. Now I'm going to go below it, okay, and add some of this down here. So what this is doing is it's going to represent maybe some cloud um, reflections in my water area. Okay, now I'm going to show you how it just kind of... Um, Oh, kind of smudgy this looks here, okay? Just so you don't get panic and say, oh my god, my, you know, this looks this looks terrible, okay? When you stamp your image over the top of it, I don't know, it just it seems to all bring it together anyway. Okay, so, I don't know, this is about, well, this is about, uh, let me see, this is five and a half, so I'd say this is about like a three inch space, two and a half maybe. All right, so, that is what it looks like right there, okay? See how kind of smudgy it looks? It's not, you know, super smooth or anything like that. Sometimes not having it not so smooth looks better, you know, in my opinion. Because you get variations in your cloud, you know, it looks, you know, kind of uh, cumulusly and kind of billowy like that, okay? But, I mean, you could, you know, uh, smooth that out if you want to, or you can stamp your image and then smooth it out after, you know, you can put some more on the top of it. Okay, let's go back to our lakeside cove here. Now, this ink, when, when you're stamping on this, over the top of this white brilliance ink and the vinyl holographic, when you're stamping it over the top of this white pigment ink, you're kind of stamping the ink, not necessarily the paper, okay? Now, inevitably, it's going to run off, you know, some of this, probably unless I just built up, you know, that uh, white really high. But, um, so it's really, you know, the, the thing that's accepting the ink is going to be this white here. Okay, now, so, okay, so that being said, I've used 
dye based ink, you know, to make my impressions over the top of that, and that seemed to work. And I've used stays on, and that seemed to work too. So I'm just going to go with the stays on. Alright, and hopefully that is wet enough. I should re ink my stays on quite often, but I don't. Okay, so back to the larger imagery. Get a good amount of pressure. Okay, and peel off carefully. It really sticks, okay? That emulsion coating on there. So just kind of peel it off nice and slowly. Sometimes it gets a little bit of a blotchy impression, okay? So I got that down there, but I'm gonna add some white, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you something here. Let's go back to our cloud cumulus here. You can, I mean, this could be, you know, the scene right here and you can color in here. I got a little blotchy, like I said, but I'm gonna go back to, you know, that Bahama blue. You can go to um, your other blue if you want to, Danube or something like that. And I'm going to take this, blot off the edges, okay? Blot off pretty good, you know, this holographic. And what I'm going to do is, see, I have that white coming up here, okay? And I'm going to add this cloud right up there like so. Look at that. Isn't that cool looking? And why don't we do that reflection right down here? Okay, and I'll put it went like this and I'm going upside down. Oh, I'm using the wood mounted. Yeah, just so you, you can see it here. Okay, and look at that kind of cool dynamic look, huh? All right, now I think what I'm going to do here is I'll add a little bit of foreground to my scene. tree on the lower left and right um, corners. And then I can add more if I want to. about an overhanging tree branch. That branch came out a little bit light, so I'm going to add another one right over the top of it. Okay. Maybe a couple. There we go. All right, so we have our foundation for our scene right there. It'd be really great with that little fisherman down here or something like that, but look at this kind of look in here. But see, right in here where we did that blocking out with the white, you don't have that holographic showing through these areas. Now you can do it with different types of opacities. You can add a thinner layer of white ink if you want it to show through a little bit in here. I could have done other things like adding more clouds out to the side here, but this type of cloud like this would be really cool with, um, oh, let's see, I think this type of thing right here where you can add white pigment ink all around in the perimeter like this and add your clouds like that and you can have it you know with that type of rainbow look showing throughout the clouds or you know in certain areas of them and it really gives it a cool look have some trees or something like this or the oak branch like this you know in the foreground like you're kind of looking up at the sky put some birds up there or just a quote stamp and i think it would look for make for a really elegant looking um visual scenario 
Okay, so anyways, remember uh, to add, now in this case, you're adding a pretty thick layer of um, white pigmenting. So you can use quite a bit of it, all right? Uh, just don't block out everything. Of course, you want the quality of the holographic to show, but give that a try. And you have two pieces in there, you know, maybe try a couple different scenarios or whatnot. Maybe do one with the Lakeside Cove and one with the clouds if you want to. Okay, so let's do that and uh, see how that goes. And hope you have fun with that one. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that vinyl holographic cardstock. It's a little bit different to work on. It's, uh, you know, working on that emulsion coating like that not to mention a metallic and something um, very uh, non-porous. It's, it's a different type of experience. So you might have had run into things like impression kind of issues, okay? Keep that in mind, you know, I mean, you'll get the feel of it, you know, um, you know, going forward. Like I said, I, I ran into a little bit of a, a imprinting type of thing here, but I don't know, I just kind of work around it. So here's something that, you know, I can do with this piece right here. There, it didn't print, you know, some of these areas down here, so I can just add in my little fog texturing like this, and it looks, you know, completely, I don't know, purposeful, like this, okay? You can see that kind of that blanket of fog, um, the water side, uh, at the water's edge, I guess. And see this cloud up here, you know, if you wanna make that a little bit more billowy, um, use less ink, <laughs> okay, because, uh, this really grabs your um, white ink. I almost added too much right there, but um, see so like this, you can kind of give your pieces a little bit of atmosphere in here um, with the white pigmenting. But here's what I'm gonna show you right here. Um, in adding some embellishments to your pieces, one of the things about the, um, the white brilliant ink is if you want to add a little bit of color to your um, areas where you've done that blocking out with the brilliant sink. This brilliant sink surprisingly can accept some color. So uh, from colored pencils, look how beautifully you can color over the top of brilliant sink. I'm not really coloring the printable vinyl. The printable vinyl is just too slick, but you put this white pigment ink down there. And again, it's the brilliance white pigment ink because it's water-based. It's not your oil-based ones, which all other types of uh, pigment inks are. But see that where I kind of added a little bit of shading to my um, rocks. Here's a little bit of pink. You know, if you want to add a little bit of a uh, color to, you know, your sky, something like that can be kind of interesting. Sometimes I put it on a little bit kind of, uh, I don't know, rough. So I smooth it out and I just put a little bit of white pigment ink over the top of my application. But you see that little tinge of pink in there? So it makes it kind of interesting. Other ways to embellish your pieces, I like white acrylic paint pens, or you can have a white gel pen. And, you know, if you want to add little sparkles to your water, it makes it look like your water is really glistening with the light in your scenes. Okay. And I add that right down there. You get a little crystal star up in your sky if you want to, or you saw in that video where I've added glow-in-the-dark stars to my more nighttime type of skies, things like that. Um, you can do foreground images down here if you haven't done it yet, but you can have your foreground images and embossing or something like that. I don't know if you had the, um, the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, but sometimes what I do is I take a, a toothbrush and I just put a little bit of paint in the corner of my toothbrush like this. You have to get the right consistency of this, so you might add a little bit of water to it if you're, you know, it's dried out. Or if you're using a brand new model, maybe it's all nice and liquidy. You dip down into it a little bit, and then you do your, like, going back to kindergarten, you splatter paint it. So this is a scene where I've done, like, a splatter painting, like, texturing over everything like that. Or on the vellum piece right here, you can see that splatter painting up there. I just splatter painted the whole scene before I mounted it on this card, but uh, you can see this snowfall in here. If you just do it up in the sky, it looks like stars, or if you do it over everything, it looks like snowfall. So really great way to do things, like if you're doing um, a winter type of scene and you want snowfall over it, and a very quick 
fashion, you can just kind of splatter paint the whole thing. Or if you want to add in things much more carefully and methodically, you can do it with a, a pen and go in there. Or, like I said, these can just be little sparkles on your water or highlights on your rocks. I have different videos for doing things like that. But anyways, I hope that you've learned how to use your Stampscape stamps, and I hope you've enjoyed the class. There are, at this point in time, 1,700 instructional videos on my YouTube channel that you can check out that are completely free of charge. You can rewatch this video whenever you want to. Just keep the link. And if you have any questions about any of the techniques or the different types of media surface combinations, I'm always available via email. Or you can, you know, message me on uh, uh, Facebook or um, any thing like that. So lifetime of, uh, you know, tech support from me. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I'd like to thank you for taking the class. And again, thanks to uh, Copictopia and Christina for inviting me to teach. And I really enjoyed it and was very much an honor. <laughs>